Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Much love, guys. Now, today's first story comes from Annabelle from the Wedding Drama subreddit. And it just says, I figured this also fits here and wanted to get some more opinions on if I'm an asshole. My oldest sister, Elaine, 31 female, is getting married in October 2022 to her fiancé of four years, Stephen, 35 male. I, 25 female, am the youngest of four sisters, although from my perspective, we have always been close growing up. Well, in May, Elaine asked our second sister, Gabriella, 29 female, to be her maid of honor, which is understandable because they have always been super close growing up. Me and my third sister, Celia, 26 female, expected to be bridesmaids too. However, Elaine decided to include Stephen's daughters, Tiffany, 12 female, and Sasha, 8 female, in the bridal party instead, which we were obviously a little upset about, but understood that it was our sister's special day. Well, anyway, in July, I was visiting our mum while Elaine and Gabriella were also visiting. I overheard them planning the wedding and decided to ask about the wedding colors since I was and still am super excited for my sister to be getting married. Elaine told me she was thinking of something bespoke and non-traditional for her wedding dress, which I thought was cool and totally her style. Though I still assumed the color of the dress would be white. I had no way of checking since I wasn't a bridesmaid and any texts I sent to Gabriella were ignored because it was supposed to be a surprise. In August, I picked out a yellow dress online, as I thought it was a safe bet color-wise. Before I bought the dress, I sent a picture to Gabriella, who once again left me on red. I asked Celia if she thought the dress was okay, and she agreed that since it's not floor length, it should be okay to wear to Elaine's wedding. The dress is a light yellow, knee length, plain, asymmetrical dress, and it was finally delivered last week. After it was delivered, I sent pictures to everyone, and then Elaine freaked out at me. She called me seven times while I was at work. When I finally picked up, she yelled at me about how I was an awful sister and was stealing my niece's spotlight at her wedding. Apparently, Tiffany and Sasha were supposed to be the only ones wearing yellow because Elaine wanted them to feel special. I told Elaine that if I ordered another dress, it wouldn't arrive on time, to which she told me to go to a bridal store and buy a different dress. I told her that I had already spent $50 on a new dress for her wedding and I wasn't going to spend another 200 on a fancy bridal store dress. Elaine called me selfish and told me not to bother attending her wedding if I didn't change my dress last minute. Everyone in our family is saying I'm an asshole for wanting to take away attention from two little girls on their dad's wedding day and I should just suck it up for my sister. So, am I the asshole? Edit. As so many kind people pointed out, Yes, I could go to Goodwill and find another dress. I've already suggested this to Elaine, but she rejected that idea because this is my wedding, not a Walmart. I also offered to wear an old homecoming dress, which is pink. This also wasn't good enough for Elaine because Gabriella is wearing pink and Elaine didn't want me to be dressed exactly like Gabriella. Even though Celia is also wearing a similar pink dress. I could go to Goodwill in my spare time, but Elaine has said that she wants to pick out a dress so I don't ruin her wedding. As for dyeing the yellow dress, I don't want to spend $50 on fabric dye only for it to go wrong and then be down $100 with no dress to wear to my sister's wedding, which is in early October. Now, this is an absolute not the arsehole from me. For me, you've tried everything in your power to let her know what you're doing. Before you bought the dress, you sent a picture to Gabriella, who left you on red. You received the dress, you sent the pictures out, and then everyone freaked out at you. And instead of talking to you in a normal way, she yelled at you about how you was an awful sister for stealing your new niece's spotlight at the wedding. And then on top of this, when you offered multiple alternatives to swapping the dress, she gave you no options. It just feels like there's something more going on in the background here, right? But Sailor Spyro says to OP, not the arsehole, she had an opportunity to tell you not to wear it before you bought it. Your mistake was sending a picture after. What's she going to do when another random guest happens to wear yellow? OP says the crazy thing is our mum bought a floor length white dress and Elaine is fine with it. 
Princess Nora replies that saying, okay, now that's nuts. You're stealing the spotlight from the bridesmaids by wearing a color no one told you not to, but your mum is breaking the one consistent etiquette rule for weddings, and that's fine. And on the back of that comment, all I can say is probably that Elaine isn't wearing a white dress, but you know, with all the, the weird stuff going on within this story, who knows what's going to happen. But my life is a dank meme says, OP, I'm going to go ahead and guess that your family has been treating you like this for your entire life and has brainwashed you into thinking that this kind of mistreatment, abuse and bullying is in any way normal, acceptable, or in some way any kind of remotely normal and not cruel and downright evil and crazy making. Tiao Pon says, you are absolutely correct in the discussion. However, if you want to smooth the waters for the sake of family peace in the high ground, I'd recommend shopping for a dress in person at used stores and or discountish stores. Marshalls, TJ Maxx, Target. You should be able to find something adequate that doesn't break the bank, especially if being discounted by your sister is a running pattern. You don't need to take the high road. It's just all about what type of relationship you have and want to have with her. Opie says, ah, some people already suggested this on Am I the Arsehole. As I explained there, I've offered to go to Goodwill or wear an old coming dress, but Elaine thinks both of these options are unacceptable because she wants a black tie wedding where everyone buys new outfits just to attend her wedding. Tiao Pong replies to that saying, oh, that's wild. And that definitely means you don't clearly have time to get a reasonably priced new dress. It may be worthwhile to check out Goodwill or other used stores. If you find something, you can just lie. However, if you can't find anything and don't have it in your budget or don't want to buy new, then I'd recommend telling your sister and mother clearly that you care very much, want to attend and care for your nieces, but you don't have the budget for a $200 dress. You have to wear an old homecoming one or the previously approved yellow one. Kath says, not the arsehole, sorry, but in what universe is a 25-year-old woman taking the spotlight away from an 8 and a 12-year-old because they're wearing the same color dress? That's beyond bridezilla to me. Newsflash for your sister, no one cares, they know you are the bride, they know who the girls are, but guaranteed it doesn't go any further than that. Is your sister also demanding that all the other guests refrain from wearing yellow? If your sister and or your parents feel strongly about it, let them front you the money for the more expensive dress. Lesson to sister, read and respond to your messages. OP responds to that saying, I'm not sure about the other guests, the invitations didn't even mention yellow, just Please don't wear white. Hold up, didn't we find out that mum was wearing white? The plot thickens. So then OP comes in with her update and says, this is an update to my first post where I talked about my sister Elaine wanting her stepdaughters to be the only ones in yellow. And shares the link to the first post. And continues, Elaine's wedding was this past Tuesday. And as many people suggested, I wore my old homecoming dress, which was a pink knee length dress. In the days leading up to the wedding, my mum and Elaine called me non-stop to tell me that if I wore a yellow dress, I would not be allowed into the wedding venue, and that Elaine should be the one to pick my dress from a bridal shop. As many people suggested, I told Elaine that if she wanted to pick my dress, she could pay for it. Elaine became extremely annoyed with me for my response as it was disrespectful to her personally, and as a bride that I should be more understanding about how expensive weddings are. I reminded her that she was the one who wanted a large black tie wedding and that no one forced her to be so controlling over colors and outfits. Elaine then proceeded to block me via text but clearly told our family what I said because I continued to receive texts from our mom and Gabriella who told me I was rude and that wedding planning is stressful and I should be more accommodating. I told my mother and Gabriella that if Elaine wanted to be so controlling about my dress that she could pay for it or I would wear my old homecoming dress. That shut both my mum and Gabriella up, and I didn't hear anything else about the topic of dresses from them until the morning of Elaine's wedding. On the day of Elaine's wedding, I waited for 10 minutes while my mother refused to send me the directions to the wedding venue, because she didn't know how. Eventually, I gave up on my mum and asked Celia to send directions instead, because clearly our mum wanted me to miss the wedding. At this point, I was considering not attending the wedding at all, but I figured if I attended that my family couldn't say that I lacked effort or was being petty towards my sister. When I arrived at the wedding venue, most of the guests were already there. As I said, Elaine planned to have 100 people at her wedding, and since she hadn't specified that no one should wear yellow, there were at least 10 people present dressed in yellow, one of whom was Stephen's mother. Well, anyway, the real drama started when the rest of our extended family arrived at the wedding. 
my mother's brother began talking to me and said that he was glad I managed to get a new dress and that yellow wasn't my color anyway. So I asked him if he thought it was appropriate for his sister, my mother, to wear white to her own daughter's wedding, which he didn't reply. I got a lot of dirty looks from other family members and mean comments about how cheap I was and how much audacity I had to ask the bride to pay for my dress. At that point, I figured I could suck it up for a few more hours just to see Elaine get married and that I could then drop off the wedding gift at the reception. Well, at the wedding reception, Elaine came up to me and pulled me aside. She told me that since she didn't think I would come to the wedding, that she had cancelled my meal and that I owed her $110 if I wanted to eat at her wedding. Since it cost her $110 per head to book, I asked her why she had anticipated her own sister not attending her wedding she made out like it was my fault. I told her that I didn't have to deal with this and if this is how she wanted to be, that she could consider herself no longer my sister. I left Elaine's wedding immediately and took my gift with me, just a bottle of wine and a card. My family have texted me non-stop about how petty and jealous I am of Elaine, etc, etc. So Reddit was right. My sister was trying to exclude me from her wedding. Thanks for that. I will now be going no contact with Elaine and my mother for their favoritism. So obviously there were some questions after this one. Sexy bartender says, have they treated you like this before? How were yours relationships growing up? There must have been signs prior to this wedding that they didn't think highly of you and tried to exclude you out of events. Either way, good riddance, keep no contact and don't even invite them to your future wedding. OP says, I honestly thought we were close growing up. Like sure, my older sisters would do stuff on their own, but I figured that was just because they wanted time to themselves, not because they were purposely trying to exclude me from their lives. The Greek Italian says, holy crap, I actually can't believe the audacity of your mum, Elaine, and the other family members. Did your mum actually wear white to Elaine's wedding though? Opie says, yes, our mum wore white to Elaine's wedding, but this wasn't a problem because she apparently had two wedding dresses, according to Celia. However, I left without seeing Elaine's second dress. And then some info on if Opie is the family scapegoat. Opie says to answer your question, growing up, family members would tell our parents that Elaine was the prettiest and that she would find a successful husband and have a bright future because of how pretty she was. She used to do child pageants. And then on Opie and her relationship with her sisters. Well, Celia thinks I'm right to cut contact with Elaine after the way she spoke to me at the wedding and the way she treated me over the whole yellow dress issue. Gabriella hasn't tried to reach out, so I have no idea how she feels. And that was OP's last post on the matter, and I came out of this one just feeling, what the fuck's going on, you know? But what do you suspect the reason is in this post? Can you come up with any? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below, and let's move on to another story. Now we're going to cover another story from the Am I the Arsehole subreddit. It does have an update as well from Iria of Dusk, who says, Would I be the arsehole if I continued to stretch my ears after my boyfriend expressed how much he hates it? I, 30 female, have been with my boyfriend, 30 male, for just shy of a decade. He's a very clean cut guy and very professional in appearance. I, on the other hand, have a sleeve of tattoos, dyed hair and pierced ears. He works from home as a lead programmer for a company while I work as a manager slash pet groomer. Despite our opposite looks and career choices, we have lots of interests and opinions in common. If anything, I think our differences help balance us out. Some background that may help add context to our relationship. I started getting tattoos before we met, but my biggest piece was done two years ago. He's not a big fan of tattoos and has absolutely no plan to ever get any. I've never pushed, but I have asked if he'd get a tiny one with me. It's not a big deal for me, so after he said no, I've just left it. He wasn't a fan of my big piece, but because I've had ink done before, he voiced some concerns about the amount of money I've spent, but left it at that. Fast forward this past month. I've always liked the jewelry that people with stretched ears get to wear. Some of it looks pretty cool slash pretty, and I, on a whim, decided I would stretch my current piercings. With the help and advice of a friend, I got a kit and have been working on stretching with the goal being about a 2G slash 0G max. When I told him about this, he voiced that he really did not like how they looked and he did not want me stretching to the point where you could look through my ear or fit a pencil. 
I told him not to worry and that I'd stop before I got to the generally accepted point of no return. Today I was moving up from a 10G to an 8G and he was watching me moisturize and sanitize my jewelry and ears. Once again, he asked how big I was going and I showed him what a 2G looked like. He gave me an unpleasant look and explained that he really hated how gauges and stretched ears look. He further went in to explain that stretched ears were not my aesthetic as it was more punk I fit into more streetwear or gal styles. He doesn't like how they look and doesn't think I'll look good with them. I was disheartened. I took out my jewelry, packed them up and put them away to maybe discard. I'm now sitting here debating I should continue stretching because it's something I want for myself or if I should honor his wishes and stop. I already pushed my luck with how many tattoos and how big they are. So maybe I should give up on this one thing. I don't want him to think I'm unattractive. So I don't want to change myself past what he's willing to accept. But I also don't want him to tell me what to do with my body. So, would I be the arsehole? If I continued stretching my ears after my boyfriend expressed how much he hates it. Global Trekker says, No one's an arsehole here, but honestly, no matter how hard you try, oil and water don't mix. Urban Yeti says, No one's an arsehole here. You can continue to stretch if you want, despite knowing your boyfriend isn't keen. But your boyfriend can then react as he finds appropriate. If he's truly put off by them, he might end up considering breaking up with you. Why did you ask his opinion if you weren't going to be considerate of it? Opie says it's not that I really asked for his opinion. I only brought it up to him the first time just to let him know this was a thing I wanted to do because I was interested in it. Heroku says no one's an asshole here. You can have freedom, but you can't have license. Your boyfriend has given you his opinion. You're still free to do whatever you want. With freedom, you can make your choices, factor in how they affect other people, deciding your priorities and accepting the consequences, good and bad. You don't get to have license where you can do whatever you want without having to think of how your choices and actions affect anyone else and be free from any negative reactions or consequences. And one more comment that says, can we stop acting like as someone in a relationship, you should just do whatever you want, even though you know it might make your partner unattracted to you. Why are people acting like attraction doesn't matter anymore when you love someone? If my girlfriend wanted to shave her head bald all of a sudden, it's her right to do because it's her hair. But if I tell her, that will put me off and she does it anyway. I'm no more of an asshole if I end up leaving her. That's her doing. Edit. For the people who know damn well I'm not talking about something temporary, let's take a face tattoo as an example. If I told my girlfriend I wanted to cover my face in tattoos, I knew for a fact she would hate it. If he gets put off by it, and I knew it, I still went through, that's on me. Stop making excuses. And the face tattoo example always pops into my head whenever we cover stories like this. Imagine being with a partner and they say, I'm going to get a full face tattoo, you know, completely cover your face. If I was to do that myself and a partner told me that, that they didn't like that, I would totally understand that as well. And I wouldn't make that decision. People are allowed to dislike these things. It doesn't make them assholes. I've had people I know tell me that they don't like my sleeve tattoo. They don't, they just, they're just not keen on tattoos in general, really. And I get that. But of course, you can make the choice, like you said as well. It is your body. You're allowed to make that choice. There is the possibility of consequences that come from that. So I wouldn't say either of you are assholes in this situation. But Opie updates the post and says thank you to everyone that weighed in. I spent some time reading as many comments as I could. I didn't just read the comments saying not the arsehole or no one's an arsehole here. I also read the ones that said you're the arsehole and some of the chains that went on a tangent about ear stretching. I couldn't read them all, but I did want to post an update and respond to some of the comments as a whole. I told him last night that I have decided to stop stretching. He simply gave me a hmm in response while we continued to make dinner and we haven't talked about it since. I know I'm allowed to do with my body as I see fit, as he's free to leave me if he wants. Neither him nor I look, act, or think like when we first met. Some of the changes by choice and others because of aging as a thing. Tastes have changed, but I have still chosen him. I want to believe that he continues to choose me. This choice to stop was not because he told me to, but because a lot of people have mentioned. Relationships are give and take. At almost a decade, what I do to my ears or not is not a hill I'm willing to die on. For those of you who have showed concern about the language I used in my post, 
I'm grateful for your concern and I wholeheartedly believe this is a choice I made and not a decision based on any fear of abandonment. A few commenters asked how I'd like it if he changed himself in a way that I didn't find attractive. Short answer is, I don't have an answer. I'd like to say at this point in our relationship, I'm here because of who he is on the inside. But I do believe that to be my answer. I am human and I am flawed. Maybe there is a thing he could do, but I can't think of anything. I know it seems like I stretched my ears from a 14G to a 10G very quickly. You would be correct. I read several articles stating that I should wait a month or so. I've also read several posts from people with stretched ears that said, listen to my body. I won't bore anyone with the details, but I opted to listen to my body. Finally, to the user concerned about stretched ears in my line of work. It's not a hazard, I assure you. My GM and a couple of my colleagues have gauges and have never had a dog almost rip one. Your comment made me chuckle because if anything, we're all more concerned about dogs kicking our tools than damage to our body slash body mods and I regret not replying before I lost it in the sea of comments. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? How would you react if your partner had something similar done? Do you think it would affect you in any way or, or not? Maybe you're totally fine with it. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so much for being involved. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love.